first ball. Right on the spot. Good afternoon, Bish, and uh, good day to all. Certainly, a lot expected uh, in this game. Both teams will uh, look to try and get the advantage. A lot of the individual players will try and get some performance under the belt. Some of them already have got off to a good start in the tournament. But uh, that man on the screen, Virendra Shewag, will try and get some runs under his belt today. Very good delivery. A little bit of bounce. And uh, Maharuf was the man that dismissed Virendra Shewag in the first match of this tournament. Very noticeable, Bish, is that um, Maruf has developed a ball that goes away. Now, with his action, he's been basically in swing, in swing, in swing. But uh, here, he's got that one that's uh, going away. So that's uh, a really good addition to his uh, repertoire. No ball and punched away by Sewag. It shall run away for four. The first boundary, first runs of the innings. Maruf over pitching. His uh, front foot also going over the line. And uh, that time, good movement of the feet by Shewag right to the pitch of the ball. And uh, finding that uh, gap at extra cover. Good shot from within the Shewag to get off the mark. That's in there. And it's uh, gone to third man. Saro Ganguly is known to play the ball in the air in that uh, backward point, Kali region. Surprising that uh, Adhapatu hasn't had a gully for him, just a slip. Was a loosener. And, uh, Ganguly pushing at it, just lobbed it in the air. So he gets off the mark. India winning the toss uh, and uh, deciding to bat first. No question about that. Pitch looking very flat, very dry. A few cracks, but uh, certainly looks the best pitch in this tournament so far. Well, you'd expect a few deliveries to go past the outside edge from these two bowlers who do get movement through the air and off the scene. Does look a very good pitch. The opening partnerships going in this tournament have not done very well any of the teams that run a little looks as though it's a pitch if you can get through the first 10 or 15 overs you can fill your boots you expect this from uh, Loco Hetige expect the ball to swing around and a one by result Rare blemish then uh, by Sangakara. Good little bit of movement here for Lokwe Tige. Went very nicely off the seam, almost like a leg break. Dropped it. How costly can that chance prove to be for Sewag? Chased at one outside the off stump. Sangakaro went for it. Possibly just got a glove. Just pretty wide. If he left it, it would have been called a wide. Sangakaro goes for it. Doesn't get his gloves. Slip is wide. Just gets his hands to it. And uh, spilt in the end. It was uh, hit with tremendous power. A very thick edge. And a chance corner begging. to the camera and having a good look at his son to see what he can produce in what is expected to be a fierce contest already a catch going down a 
It's pretty close to being a wide. In fact, it's called a wide. Three wides in the innings already. And uh, we are into the fourth over. Last over, Shevag had a big slash at uh, a delivery from Maruf. And the question is, was first slip standing too wide, Mahela Jagodana? That's gone between keeper and uh, gully as well yeah when you have just that one slip a lot of teams try to cover a lot more ground the keeper and the slip come to some type of agreement as to how wide they will stand and who will go for it and it's one of i suppose the disadvantages of that in that a lot of ground has to be covered by either one of those catches Fumble again. So Sri Lanka haven't started off very special in the field here. That's the uh, drop catch or the catch which went between uh, keeper and slip. And uh, certainly it was just probably touching the fingertips of uh, Mahala Jayabodhana. A foot and a half to his left and uh, probably the ball would have been much closer to him. But that's obvious the agreement between keeper and slip. That's gone away for four. It was in the air for a while. Uh, just forward of square. Boundary to Ganguly. Sarab Ganguly loves it there. Plays the ball beautifully off his feet, off his pads. And uh, that was there to be hit. Made the most of it. And again, the ball just simply flying on this outfield. It's the best opening partnership of the series. That's how difficult it has been for the opening batsman. Edged and short. Just short, I suspect, of Sangakara. So we're not short of action here in the opening rounds of this contest. Now there's no first slip. Kanguli pushed one in the air towards Gali earlier on. Slip moved to Gali and certainly a big edge. And falling well short of Sangakara, of course. So the fast bowlers, the opening bowlers getting the edge. But yet, no luck for the Sri Lankans. Well run single. It's a rare occasion when the Sri Lankan attack is reduced to just one frontline spinner. Can't remember when that last happened. Possibly Dilshan will bowl a few overs of spin. But uh, four frontline bowlers in the attack for this match. Frontline pace bowlers in the attack. And only that man, Upul Chandana, will be doing the spinning. Japrakash Dharan, the new debutant. Squeezed through the offside. Just a couple of runs quite noticeable neither of these batsmen are looking to hit the ball too hard they are obviously looking to spend time in the middle Nanguli has been playing in the UK but just looking to acclimatize himself to this pitch here in Dambula and Sewag himself looking to spend time at the crease and early signs Bish is certainly that uh, big, this pitch is behaving uh, much better than the other two that uh, has been played on before Dropped again. Twice. Sewag has been dropped off the same unlucky bowler, Maharuf. It was a good day for Maharuf yesterday. Three wickets for nine runs in his 10 over spell. Not so today. Nothing's going right for him. Short outside the off stump. Sewag goes for the cut. Went very quickly, but. Uh, to the right hand of Mahala Jayabodhana, who fails to hold on to it. Difficult, but that's the type of catch you've uh, got to hold. The reactions there from Jayabodhana aren't great. Both himself and Sangakara just seem to be reacting a touch late 
the ball is banging into the hands you have to hold on to that let's have a look at it again Ian Chappell gave an exhibition yesterday I think it was on uh, the movement of the feet the balance and you're feeling it slip it well into the palms of the hands that should have been held another single to Fernando 26 without loss Once again, this could be called an edge, but this is intentional. More uh, purpose in the shot. If I can say a little more control with that slash. I think he's just going for it now. He, he's going to play big shots out there. He doesn't seem to have any control. He doesn't really want to take his time to get into the innings. He's just, his front foot is on middle and leg. His back foot leaves the ground. And he's not playing with too much control, but there is purpose in that shot, that's for sure. And Lotte, Locker Hetege is the frustrated one. I'm amazed that they don't have any slips for Virindu Sehwag. He's a big wicket. It's best that they get him early. He's offered chances at slips. There's nothing to suggest that he is growing in confidence as his form is getting better. Marvan Adapatu has no slips for Sehwag. Now he's concentrating on these these men. And you don't want to be one of those. If Sehwag's going to play as powerfully as he is, you don't want to be there in case he hits the middle, the middle of the bat. And maybe a wide slip where that arrow is. Third man possibly could come a little little, little finer. And now he he's just sort of... Adapadu is saying, we think you're going to hit the ball really well. Well, he's a defensive captain, there's no doubt about it. Have a look at this field now. They've got the square leg coming inside the circle. And he's got some runs on the onside. This is a well-timed shot. And he won't get it. In fact, he's hit that against the wind, so that was superbly timed. Poor bowling, really poor bowling. 35 for now. Sehwag was almost uh, handshaking distance from Ganguly. It's a no ball. down to third man for a single this is something that I've mentioned earlier as well Ian Chappell totally disagrees with me on this now if you have a coach and uh, we reckon these days that they have an important role do you agree that the coach could come in at this stage this is an important time of the match and at this time if you can convey to the captain that you need to get a little more attacking this is a crucial passage of play or should he wait for the drinks break or the lunch break to dwell on matters when they're past? I think drinks break. Drinks break and then at the end of the game, these are the areas we need to pick up in. There's a man out there. And then you can just keep developing your captain over a period of time and, and then have him thinking on his feet. He's the man out there. The one thing cricket has got is that, and retained as a tradition, is the captain runs the team. And not the coach like in football for example so I like the fact that he should be making notes he'll get a message to him at the designated breaks and legal breaks he doesn't have to run things out to a captain and then at the end no, tomorrow for example let's work on where you might have gone wrong we could have been more attacking here you could have defended a bit better there and work on his skills good shout this looks pretty straight Daryl Harper says no Maruf cannot believe it Nino is gone, 38 for no wicket. Good ball, a great start. 
Now, was that intentional? If it was, <laughs> you've got to admire this guy's temperament. His ball, the first ball of his international career, a great Yorker. Spot on middle as well. Savag was winding up, looking to really get to him first ball and could do nothing. It's gone over the keeper's head. Two runs. Getting an applause for the effort, the fielder there in the deep. Well, the bounce of the ball is certainly going India's way, but I think Sri Lanka need to make their own luck. They had have taken one or both of those catches that have come their way and not had a fumble or two, they might have been on a bit more of a roll than they are now. And little things like this seem to be going against them today. Someone needs to turn it around. Another good arm. Good running. Once again, the fielder in the circle, on the circle. 11 0 is gone, 44 for no wicket. Murli not playing today, rested. Gone straight to the fielder in extra cover. Ganguly would be disappointed. It's almost an over pitch delivery. Now, for mine, Sanjay, he should be back at the hotel possibly back at Colombo now because you don't want him sitting around the ground thinking and concentrating and feeling as if it's another cricket game he's having a rest today for some reason we, we don't really understand why but he's having a rest go go away from cricket for a day get back into it next match maybe because he's been away for 11 months before the series and he just wants to stay close not yet Maybe uh, another series and I might do that, Ian. Well, it was stated that, that uh, they have got plenty of cricket uh, coming up. The captain said that at the toss. So it only was a Macram and Waka Yunus have taken more wickets than Murali in one day. Is certainly the king of Dambulla. 372 compared to 416. That's his next target. Oh, he's got it through. Beautiful shot for four. Well, it's not from lack of trying. The Sri Lankans are trying to get his cover drive working as far as I can see. It's been full and up there for about the last over and a half. Finally, he leans into one and finds the gap. It's been a defensive tactic. Marvin Adipatu possibly could address where his bowlers are pitching it rather than the field placings to defend. Because eventually the batsman is going to get hold of one and get used to those gaps. When the coach has a word with him at drinks, it might just be a bit too late. We we'll get a run. And I say this because I found him run Khan when he was uh, not capturing on the field, was like a coach of the Pakistan team. And if he found something wrong while he was not on the field, he would make sure that the message was carried at that time, right away. He wouldn't wait for a drinks break or a tea break or end of day's play. Now there's a chance Tom Moody might convey to Marwan. You get, need to get a little more positive, but 15 overs would be bold. These batsmen would be playing differently. So the opportunity is lost as far as Atapatu is concerned and Sri Lanka is concerned. But what you're saying was, you know, as a wide is called there, Imran was still the captain but he was still off, he was off the field, is that right? So that's great, as long as it's coming from the captain. You know, and and he's thinking. I think Tom Moody, what he's got to do, is he's got to get out of Patu thinking like Imran Khan and aspiring to be as thoughtful and thinking on his feet in all situations because he's got a great responsibility in leading this national team. That's his job. That is his job, to get things right in these sort of situations. I'm just averse to the idea of captains uh, learning on an international, in an international game. If Tom Moody has some, seen something that's uh, glaring, something that's really wrong, it's going to hurt the team. 
why not convey to him right at that time? Mawana to could learn from it. Why wait? Too soft. Too soft, Sanjay. Ah, he's got that through. Sehwag has found the middle of the bat after a long time. The typical Sehwag four to end the over. 60 for no wicket. Nicely played, square through the offside. It is a lightning quick outfield. Man in the deep had no chance. It's a no ball as well. I think perhaps the other thing that comes into it is a lot of captains look upon one day cricket as a containment game. Well, I've only ever found that the best way to contain, and particularly if we're up against really good players, there's only one sure way to contain, and that's to send them back to the pavilion. You're not going to contain Savag if he's in form, Ganguly if he's in form, Dravid, those players. You're not going to contain them. Only way you'll stop them scoring is to send them back. Oh, bowling inside edge. First international wicket for him. Jayaprakash Dharan has given Sri Lanka some hope in fact a lot of hope have got rid of the dangerous Sehwag well they got the wicket but really it came the batsman presented it to uh, Sri Lanka just perhaps a little bit of frustration there for Sehwag he really tried to belt that ball perhaps tried to hit it too hard and uh, dragged it back onto the stumps with the underneath edge Big breakthrough for Sri Lanka, India 67. Sri Lanka have got uh, a big breakthrough here, courtesy the batsman, not uh, as much the bowler. Vivius Luxman, the stylist, Vivius Luxman is out there. No, no, no. Sri Lankans were convinced that there was an edge. Umpire thought otherwise. I thought that there was an edge. Well, umpire uh, Harper just flinched for a moment. It looked like he was going to do something, and then he shook his head. Certainly, the men behind uh, the wicket were all up pretty quickly. There's big noise there, and the bowler himself was up ah! has gone across the line maybe a bit of bat involved he's looking at his stick sort of gangly uh, walking across the line of that ball devious luxman uh, definitely edging that one is that woody sound noise and held by the keeper Tracker, they're confirming that there was an edge to be had. Nicely fielded at mid-off. Good strike from Vivius Luxman. He can bat in his natural way and uh, be successful on these tracks, Vivius Luxman. It's Farvez Maruf who uh, did a wonderful job at mid-off. Firmly at the moment, VBS Laxman, but not uh, not finding the gaps. This is it. Through a square leg for a run. Twelve balls to get off the mark. And he's the type of player who can uh, catch up very quickly with his strike rate. If he's there for any length of time. Ganguly 23 from 65 balls. That's gone in the air. Looked very awkward handling that short one from Delara Fernando. 
Sri Lanka clearly missed the trick by not introducing this bowler to Saurav earlier in the inning. 70 for one. Gone down the track. It's a good connection. He'll get a boundary. Mid off and mid on up in the ring. So very safe option taken by Saurav Ganguly. Good hit. Well, he's picked his bowler. And he's decided that the uh, the medium pacer, he can get down the track and drive him. And the good thing about that shot is he didn't try and hit across it. Just hit straight through the line. Thing about VBS Laxman when he's at the crease is uh, to, to see a good deal of risk work involved in his shots. Had a lucky escape very early on in his innings. And generally, you think there was an edge there that was missed by the umpire. Snick. Like the one that he edged a little lower. And, uh, the previous delivery. One gets a feeling that Ganguly has it's a bit of a misfield there. Look for the second, but um, fielder quickly recovering. I've got the feeling that Ganguly has done a lot of work uh, on his technique. Probably the, during the time he really wasn't playing cricket or where the ban was imposed on him. Stroked away down to third Lama. man. Ganguly still has been just looking at nudging it around. It's just once in the last few overs that he really took on the bowlers. His partnership uh, just meandering along. 11 runs of 37 balls. It's been an illustrious career for the former Ingl Indian captain. Not captain in this tournament. Very close to 10,000 runs in one day internationals. Just two players above him. Zaman Ulhaq, the Pakistan captain, and uh, Sachin Tendulkar. Ole, come on! Yes, I heard Ian and Ramis talk about the Afro Asian um, series and heard that Zaman Ulhaq was captaining, but I'm uh, rather surprised that Saurabh Ganguly has been omitted from the Asian squad. He's um, we read in the papers today that he's expressed outrage that he's been left out for someone who's made 10,000, almost 10,000 one-day runs. Just four short of his 10,000, averaging 41.31. The average is he's ahead of uh, in Samamul Haq 39.9 naught and Jai Surya is just behind him also 33 short of the 10,000 80 for one And he's gotten it. 10,000 runs for Saurav Ganguly. And it's come at a strike rate of a nigh on 74 runs per 100 balls. And all his teammates will uh, rise and salute. He has been a master batsman in this version of the game. Monumental performance. A milestone which uh, takes him right to the top. An average of 41.32. delivery it's a 
Adil Harafan and to continue to test Lakshman with the short one. He's shown some aversion to playing the short one. In fact, uh, got himself into some sort of trouble. The ball really not coming on on him. Pulled away. Little bit of innovation from Ganguly. 25 overs gone, 92 for one. Good strike from Laxman. Maybe it should have been stopped at a mid on. That certainly was a good looking shot from Laxman. He certainly has realized that uh, it's about time that the acceleration needs to take place. It's very well played, in fact, plenty of meat on that. An exclusive club for Saurav Ganguly and his membership today. Just three batsmen in the history of the game have gone past 10,000 runs in one day internationals and his average is very good. He said he's made this 10,000 at a time when uh, Everything wasn't really going well for him. Shows a lot of courage and uh, temperament. Sort of a lot would be expected from him in this innings. He'll be pushing for two, but he won't get it. I think Sri Lanka, I think Adapatu would be quite happy to chase anything around 240 here. He's got no Murali in his team today, so he'll have to give a little leeway for that. But by now, I would think that Sri Lanka's batting should have become attuned, whatever rusty areas there have been would have been shaken off the Test Series, a couple of one-day games now. Morning. Having experienced the West Indians uh, chase the 240 and uh, despite having lost all those wickets earlier on, get to uh, close on 200, I think that really is something that Atapath would be banking on. He certainly has the depth in his batting, but uh, one really can't discount the Indian seamers. They too could move the ball given the right conditions. Got Patan, Zaid Khan and Balaji. Near and Balji. Ninety nine for one. Where can you get amazing deals on free mobile phones? If you talk to mobiles for free, you'll love our nine hundred minutes per month offer. That's 900 minutes, any network, any time. Plus there's 100 text messages or a £10 data bundle. And not forgetting your phone absolutely free with free nationwide delivery. All from 9 99 per month. Call now on 0800 031 9400 and take advantage of this. Pull that away. He's found another option. Certainly a man with a lot of talent and uh, ability to innovate. You've seen the man inside the ring and uh, plenty of open spaces in that long on mid picket region and uh, looks to take the real route there. Fifty partnership from 87 balls, so it's been uh, steady going. In fact, steady going right through for India. Oh, Ball yeah. Dilshan has struck. Great opportunity loss for VVS Lakshman. Where did that pitch? Was that in the rough? I think he's trying to get the attention of the coach. Did you see the spin? 
There was certainly some spin here. Well, that's the uh, classic off spinner's dismissal. Curve it away and spin it back and hit the top of off stump. Not sure he was trying to get the uh, the coach's uh, attention. Did catch the inside edge, but I think he might have been uh, trying to get Murley's attention. It's 117 for two. Flexibility is the key word for India in this tournament. Mahendra Singh Dhoni has been up and down the batting order. Finally, gets the 50th run. And that is his 60th One Day International 50. Well, coming back into the side with a point to prove, and uh, Ganguly has gone about it in a very solid fashion. Punched away nicely to long off for a single. He's taken his time. 50 of 105 balls, strike rate of 47. Something that you don't relate to Ganguly. Come on! Come on! Direct hit. That could have been close. Mahela Jaiwardhane was uh, backing up. Pushing uh, a bit harder with his running between wickets today, Ganguly. First attempt at a big shot. Gensukul Chandana, he'll get a single. He's got perhaps a bit too close to the ball. Chandana getting that ball to curve away from Ganguly. Very nearly hit it back to the bowler. Haven't yet got any clues to this promotion. Dhoni has been happy picking up the singles. He's been promoted ahead of Rahul Dravid, the other pure batsman in the team. He's going to look for two, should get it comfortably. He's very much an arm player. Dhoni, he's uh, he's a very strong, got very strong forearms, but um, he hits mostly with his arms. Not a lot of wrist work, you know. Another butcher-like cut towards point, deep point. Strong man, Dhoni. Ball, Ball and gone. Upul Chandana has struck. Getting the ball to spin between the bat and pad. And Saurav Ganguly's inning comes to an end. A score of 51. Well, we've just seen the classic uh, off spinner's dismissal. Now we've seen the classic leg spinner. Curve it away, spin it back. On this occasion, it crashes into leg stump as Ganguly looked to just force it on the onside, but the drift just opened a bit of a gap between bat and pad, and Upal Chan found it. It's 127 to 3. We've got Rahul Dravid, who is coming to replace uh, Saurav Ganguly. He's been in good form, the most successful batsman on this ground. And in fact, Saurav Gangpi also, every time he's batted at the Rangiri Stadium. He's got runs. Big 
reach out for leg before. Yeah. Give it. Just as an afterthought, it could be the correct decision, but a delayed decision from Tiron Vijaywardhane. And Dravid has been dismissed. A duck to the first ball that he faced. The other thing that makes uh, the decision look a little more dubious is the fact that he was well away from the stumps when he gave it. It's certainly going to hit the stumps. The only real point of uh, dispute is whether it hit him in line or not, and that is pretty marginal. India, 128 for four. Another opportunity for Mohamed Kev. taken on the pads that may have been just hitting outside the line of the off stump. another close call for India once again it was the curve through the air that caused the problem for the batsman question I've got about that last LBW appeal was whether it hit the batsman on the full or not. If it hit on the half volley, I can see why the umpire gave it not out, because the ball didn't travel far enough for him to see if it was going straight or not. It's hit him on the toe, and under the stupid law they've got now, which says you've got to assume the ball's going straight on, and you should never assume anything as an umpire, but I think that might have been out. Oh! Once again, the drift. Dhoni almost falling over. That last ball. He's hit that extremely hard for four. There a bit of bat on it, Dilshan certainly thinks so. And it wasn't called a wide. Tony looking for one of those uh, little dab shots. He just got a bit of a, an edge on it, which is why it missed the gloves. There's the big space we're talking about, and there's a two. It's not even a single. It's a two, and they're looking for three and gets it and all Dilhara did was got on the off middle and off stump of Muhammad Kaif he finds three now there's 11 overs to go and the score is 154 Just looking to hit, might possibly on the outside a little too much. Did it spin? Not sure, but what I am sure of, it was a sharp catch, well taken. Doshan picking up a low catch. It's a little bit of flight in that delivery. And uh, Dhoni again, not balanced, using that bottom hand too much. And uh, hitting it nowhere, but into the hands of Tilakaratna Doshan. He's done well, picked up his third wicket, and the Mahendra Dhoni goes. 20 runs made quickly in 27 balls. Core and bowl, Dilshan, and India now 157 for five. Suresh Raina comes into the crease, batting seven for India. It is getting better and better for Sri Lanka. They've had their problems behind the wicket today, but gee, have they been sharp in front of it. Around the wicket, looking for the return catch. And he gets the diving left-hander. 
back to the other side of the wicket. Wow, we. Rainer can feel a little bit disappointed there, but certainly the Sri Lankans can't. The sixth wicket gone. 161. Suresh Rainer departs to a magnificent catch by Dilson. In comes Irfan Patan. He's an all-rounder, potential world-class all-rounder in his 32nd match. His average is 22 and a half, which is pretty good batting so low. a nice shot it's a very fast outfield that ball will win the race Mohamed Gaff's first boundary that was well played shows you that the pitch is a little on the slow side he got back he had plenty of time to wait and then just place that ball away from the backward point fieldsman High full toss put away nicely by Irfan Patan. That was a difficult ball to put away, but he made it look extremely easy. Just a polite query to the umpire whether that was a, a no ball, a high full toss over the waistline. Just used the bowler's pace on that occasion. That's it straight. And uh, will beat the fielder at long on. Very good shot from Irfan Patan. He's looked good in this little knock. Yes, he's a good young cricketer. They said he had potential as a batsman in the uh, underage teams. Batted a bit higher in the order in those days, but uh, he's smart enough to keep hitting straight. Taken brilliantly held by Maruf in his follow through. He's a very good cricketer. Did not panic. Looked at the ball, dive, and was always sure to get it. Well, that's good wicket to get rid of the, uh, the batsman at this time. That's good. Three court and bowls have been taken. They've all been good ones by the Sri Lankans. Especially good for a fast bowler following through. 194 for seven. Once again, hitting the ball straight and crisply. It's Upul Channa, wow. Now that is a first. He is usually a very safe fielder, Upul Channa. He'll be disappointed with this effort. He looked as he was approaching the ball as though he was a little bit worried about the bounce that he might get. And once you start to get nervous about getting a bad bounce, that's generally what happens. It was thumped hard and the outfield is, is quite firm, but he, in the end he really let the ball play him. Just didn't quite um, trust the bounce, I don't think. Another spanking shot, another boundary. Very good bite at batting by Irfan Patan. He's making a strong statement here. Well, that brings up the 200 for India, and he's done it in fine style. Irfan Patan, 23 from 21 deliveries. And there's been a lot of thought, apart from the fact that he hits the ball well, he times it well, there's been plenty of thought in his batting. Guided away by Harbhajan Singh. That'll be another boundary. So an expensive over for Sri Lanka. 13 runs so far in the silver. Well, the last two have been pretty expensive for Sri Lanka. 
Abidjan's done well there. Especially new at the crease. It's the sort of delivery you could miss quite easily. Chance of a run out. Direct hit, gone. Our Bhajan Singh will walk back to the hut. Good work done uh, in the field. Once again, it's a fast bowler who strikes. In the last over it was Maru who took a brilliant cotton ball. This time it's Delara Fernando who strikes the stumps just when it required. Well, the bowlers have done an excellent job. Three cotton bowls and all of them good. And then the bowler throwing the stumps down to produce a run out. It's 207 for eight. Once again, cracking shot, square through the offside, what batting. 17 off the over, brilliant stuff from Irfan Patan, 2-11 for 8. Another good drive, he wants to have the strike back, he's running hard, the throw is at the keeper, ah! gone. gone is he? Appeal has been made by Kumar Sangakara, Daryl Foster will... Uh, Ask the third umpire for the verdict. Touch and go. It wasn't a powerful throw, and that's allowed Irfan Patan to get home. The fieldsman throwing off balance. So the, the throw was accurate, but it had no power, and it took forever to get to, uh, to the keeper. And uh, that allowed Irfan Patan to get home. So that's well run. Yes, the bat was nicely grounded. The green light is on. He can resume his uh, stint. 30 from 24 balls, Irfan Patan. Five boundaries. Full toss, hit hard. It's called for two. Balaji has to come to the bowler's end. He makes it very easily. Good cricket. Good warm-up for Ifan Patan, and I guess Balaji too. He's doing a bit of running, but that'll certainly uh, loosen up the muscles for a bit of bowling. Oh, good delivery, Yorker from Maru. Strike is still with Irfan Patan, and that is what counts for India. Very good delivery under pressure, Yorker. The only mistake, I guess, uh, the left-hander made was he's looking to play across the line. He's been so good hitting the ball straight down the line. Gathering his thoughts, I guess, and Van Patan. It's gone to mid off, and they'll come back for the second. Another good hit, sensible hit. This has been a very smart batting, five boundaries in his 34. There's also been a lot of twos, so he's kept the strike. And he's giving India a target to bowl at. India scored 205 the first game against Sri Lanka and uh, made the home team work extremely hard. Drive another call for two. Balaji is running hard for the second. He's thrown at the wrong end. So India 220 for eight after 50 overs. Good recovery, courtesy Irfan Patan.
shot and put away brilliantly through point. That's a cracking shot and a cracking way to get off the mark. This boy's got talent, Upul, Chandra, Upul Taranga, just getting behind the line. But that was very short indeed. But again, you have to get it away. You have to get the placement right. And uh, he got it right between those two fielders. It's lovely timing and uh, great placement. Oh, excellent delivery. There's an edge. He's walking. Great breakthrough. It's Irfan Patan who's done the job. Just a faint edge. Good delivery, movement away from the bat. They seized the inexperience of uh, Upul Taranga. Just a delivery which was slightly pushed forward and uh, with not much width, but just enough to entice him into the cut. Gets the thinnest of edges and uh, the wicketkeeper does the rest. And uh, India have struck very early once again. Hassan isn't he delighted. Upul Taranga goes for four. Sri Lanka lose their first wicket for four runs. They are Sri Lanka's most accomplished players. Masangakar, of course, has been in the forefront recently. Caught behind, is he? Or is it just off the bat? The slip cordon and the rest of the field thought otherwise. Mighty close this. That was a big shout and certainly a noise. I would reckon that Sangha, uh, the, uh, Mahavanathapot hit the inside of his pad with the bat. Driven beautifully. Mahavanatha Patu at his very best. Signator Mahavanatha Patu shot. He's very good on the drive. That time Balaji just giving him the width and also the length. Crashes it past extra cow for four. There's a swing for Balaji, but a better swing came off the bat. That's India, that's gone through the gap. That's another boundary, this time coming off the bat of Kumar Sangakara. Very good shot. An excellent shot here by Sangakara. Sangakara really didn't get much weight on the location, but uh, just hitting it on the up. And again, the placement was absolutely brilliant. Just a bit short, but on the front foot. gone through the slip cordon it's a very fast outfield unbelievably quick yes the outfield so well manicured the ball just runs of course uh, that delivery is wide off the slips Sangakara playing tentatively but getting the outside edge he'll take those four runs must be heartbreaking for Balaji at ball uh, a reasonable delivery, in fact, better than a reasonable one. That ball shaping away and Kumar Sangakara being engaged into playing that faulty shot. He's hit that in the air. He's going to get four for it. Trying to break the shackles is Sangakara. It came off that time. Brilliant shot. Balaji didn't do a lot wrong. He just got a little straighter than the ones that Sangakara have been letting go. So not as confident with his cover drive tonight, but whew, his straight down the ground shot is looking good. Uh, may have been pitching outside the leg stump. I'm going to stick my neck out here. Tiron Vijay Vartane has given another decision. Sangakara is leaving the field a judge leg before 
just got the sneaking suspicion that may have just pitched outside the leg stump, but Indians have got another wicket. If it pitches outside leg, which it does, and shapes in a little bit, it's probably going to miss leg, although it didn't swing as much as I thought. It got Sangakara falling over across his stumps. That made it look closer to that leg and middle stump than it actually was. It wasn't far out of that strike zone, and Kumar Sangakara has to go. 16 from 30, a massive wicket, 36 for two. Mahela Jayawardhane batting at number four. Plenty of experience, 179. You'd wonder why the average is under 30. That's because of the inconsistency that one associates with his batting. No! Balaji has always been the wicket taker for India. Whether you're talking of test matches or one day matches. And he's got the big one. He's got Sangakkara, the man in form, Sri Lanka. Got it very fine. That should be a boundary for Mahela Jayawardhane. Gets off the mark with a four. And I'd love to see him keep this going, Jayawardhane. Quite often slow out of the blocks. He can play a great role for the Sri Lankans tonight. Looking for the in-swinger. Or was the off-cutter anyway. He saw it, played it beautifully. Took no risk at all. Was actually holding that for an outswinger, turned into an off cutter. That's played well, beautifully balanced at the time of meeting the ball. That's why it's gone so quickly. The final boundary, great shot. Finally, finally, and Naira has given them plenty of practice runs. You can't afford to stay there for too long. He can't control the in swing at this stage, he's got to get it across the left of screen more. It's got it's moving for him and this time Adapadu clears that front leg, gets the bat out in front and finds the boundary. Could be a run out here. It had to be a direct hit. Wonder whether underarm would have been a better idea. You get more uh, accuracy when you throw like that. But a chance missed by the Indians. Whatever you're best at. Is it underarm or is it overarm? He had time to do either. He goes the overarm, tries to knock the stump out of the ground and misses. It's easy to understand how you can miss, and it will happen plenty of times. And it wasn't that bad a throw. Got two slips. Still leg sided. That is too straight. This is a quick outfield, and he gets four. So Nero should be kicking himself at the moment. Especially with that field placing, because there's easy runs on the onside. Even if it doesn't go for a boundary, there's lots of uh, there's a guaranteed one, and uh, probably quite a few twos. And if the odd one goes to the boundary, then it's really bad news. With the field that uh, Dravid has got for him, he's telling him, you know, bowl off stump coming back in. Too wide. Punished by Jai Wardena. Well, that often happens when the bowler makes a mistake one side of the wicket. He then overcorrects. Giving Javadna too much room outside off stump. That's good batting because uh, the bowlers made two mistakes. First one on leg stump, and the second one wide of off stump. They've got to be punished, but they aren't always punished. fielding it's one area where India might have a bit of uh, strife you've got Ashish Neera and Shreve Ganguly neither of them uh, great in the field
It's a good punch. And they'll be pushing for two here as well. This is Marvin Atapatu's strength. He's not the power player that Sana Jasaria can be. But he has good timing and once he finds the gaps, he needs to be able to find the gaps. Struggled a little bit in the early parts of this innings. He has a reputation as a big score player once he gets started. I don't think he's in that sort of form yet, but uh, he did have a lot of time in the middle in the uh, in the last game, and that will help his confidence. Still hasn't found the gap. He's hit a number of these drives tonight. Is that going to be frustrating for him? It's very annoying, especially when you hit them well. The, the reason why it's annoying is because the scoreboard does have an effect on batsmen. Now this could be pushing for four. Wrong line again from Ganguly. He holds his head in uh, disbelief at the end of his follow-through. Well, it seems as though they've got some theory with Ganguly. As I said, they I, I saw him out there bowling quite a bit in the warm-up, and I thought, hello, there's some sort of plan here. But I really think that it's time for Harbhajan because uh, Dulshan did such a good job with off-spin from this same end. And I think uh, India need a wicket or two right here and now. Lucky again. As it was just on that same line. Sometimes as a captain you've got to say to yourself, if I was batting now, what would I like? And I think if you ask the Sri Lankan batsmen, they'd probably say we'd much prefer to face Ganguly than face uh, Habajan. So if that's what you think, then that's what you do. You say, right, let's get Habajan in there. Sometimes it's not a bad way to captain. What would I least like now if I was in the batting position? Once you decide who that is, you say, right, well, let's get him into the attack. And I think it's, uh, in fact, I think it's past time for Harbhajan. I think I bought the uh, Ganguly experiment. And let's go to Harbhajan. Oh, this will be tight. Yeah, that could be tight. In fact, that could be gone. Reina was the thrower. And Mavanata Patu is walking off. That is not what Sri Lanka wanted. Well, that's three in a row for uh, Mavanata Patu. Good work. He got rid of the ball very quickly, and that's why Mavanata Patu didn't even bother to, uh, to look at the umpire. Now, really, it was his call. He should have been sending Jay Vardner back. It's 78 for three. This is the moment that Tilakaratna Dilshan needs to fulfill his obvious potential from Sri Lanka's point of view. Chance there, that's gone fine, very fine. It's Rana after it. Does really well. Good aggressive feeling from the youngster. Harbhajan Singh uh, becomes that much more potent for India after the uh, medium paces uh, uh, bold great spell. Good piece of feeling, attacking the ball and making sure that uh, keeps it in play. It's quite interesting to see Dravid captain the way he has. You can see he's an attacking captain even at this stage. Yep. And get a single. In fact, he got his fingertips to the ball which allowed that extra run. That's the time when uh, the commitment doesn't really help. Had he just let that ball go, there'd be in a single to Ashish Nehra, but just deflected the ball enough for that extra run. And 
Daryl Harper has heard that one. So Ashish Nehra gets a wicket. And wickets coming at regular intervals for India. Time for the huddle. This time is the huddle of celebration. It's the channel that has uh, destroyed Tilakaratne Dilshan's intent outside the off stump and uh, Dilshan was clearly late in getting behind that line of uh, Ashish Nehra's delivery that climbed a little bit extra on him. Not so lucky with the bat. 88 for 4. Rustin Allen is the man. Another batsman with plenty of experience but on the comeback trail for Sri Lanka. got the first slip a silly point and three fielders on the offside in the ring two on the onside in the ring and the bowler has to respond to that too short for the kind of field that is set for him Russell Arnold punishing that one very good shot a little bit of width he got outside his off stump it uh, was on the shortest side and he adjusted well and found the placement. Oh, this is going to be close. Daryl Harper raises the finger. Ashish Nehra has got another wicket and he was looking towards the umpire when he was celebrating almost that wicket because this seems pretty straightforward. Nehra strikes once again. Excellent delivery from uh, Nera. It was importantly on target. It had a bit of verve, a bit of pace. Ashish Nera was convinced that he had got the batsman out, and the umpire also went in his favor. Would have gone on to rattle the middle stump and good chunk of the stump. Russell Arnold makes his uh, walk back to the pavilion, gone for four, 94 for five. It's a loco head game. The next man in. Dilhara loco head game. Mid off going back. That's the teasing off spinner. Big appeal. The finger goes up. Loco Hetige is slow to turn towards the dressing room, but the ploy has worked. The guile of Harbhajan Singh has got the better of Loku Hetige. Lot more spin, lot more flight from Harbhajan Singh. Loku Hetige didn't like the decision. Well kept by Dhoni. He waited for the umpire's decision, then didn't move away from the crease immediately. Just a touch disappointed. But Harbhajan Singh, ecstatic. He gets pumped up. 95 for 6, gone for naught. Loku had the game. It's 95 for 6. Rahul Dravid's aggressive captaincy is working. It's made the game interesting too. Every batsman has been put under pressure. Popul Chandana won't be spared. Mahela Jayawardhani continues his innings. He's watching the wickets fall at the other end. The fielding is responding to the bowler. This is good cricket from India. Yes, so he has to get it absolutely right with those two men long, mid on and mid off up in the ring length the direction has to be spot on excellent over comes to an end it's 100 for six 28 overs gone fast the ball there worked into the gap 85 k's an hour nearly 86 k's an hour that's the other thing harvesting can do you can get a sliding delivery a little bit quicker Sut subtle change with his action but get it through and if you're not reading exactly what's coming out it's a gutsy move to leave your crease but there is plenty of room over cover it's 
the gap I'm talking about. He's gone along the ground. They've got two. Chandon is coming back for three comfortably. 109 for six after 30. Oh, there's an edge there, is there? They're all over it. But the umpire isn't. Well, they've had a few queries to answer, the umpires. I must say they've remained pretty calm with all the queries that have been uh, put forward. Looks as though it uh, might have been an inside edge. It certainly sounded like it. And that's a four. Backed away and played a good cut. Good footwork on that occasion. And Bowler has now decided that he wants to push someone back. You get the feeling that it was Rahul Dravid's idea not to have someone back. The uh, bowler, as soon as one went through there, said, no, no longer. We're going to have someone out. Sweep shot over the helmet, over the batsman's helmet and the fielding helmet. That nearly got big on Jay Wardner, that. It looks spectacular when it comes off, but it's not really a great shot. And the reason for that is it's got to be premeditated. And really, I think there's got to be better ways to score runs. Wouldn't it be lovely if it just hit the fielding helmet? So you play, play that innovative shot for five. Oh, it's edge this time. Third man is fine, but he's not fine enough. Well, it's bad enough when you're captain, but you saw the look on uh, Saurav Ganguly's face there. It also hurts when you're bowling. When you get the outside edge, Genuine outside edge. Would have been a nice catch for first slip. I must say, Rahul Dravid has kept the slip in longer than most captains do, but not on this occasion. Sweepers back on the offside, so cut shots got protection, so to the leg side. Oh, oh and he's played another beauty. The bowler's hands are above his head, so whether it's an outside edge or a leg by, it's just buys. And another one that just missed the fielding helmet. It was very nearly five buys. It's only missed the helmet by uh, a whisker. Certainly uh, confused the batsman. And the keeper didn't pick it either. He was looking for the off break and it was the one that went straight on. This one's brought four and it'll be wide, so there'll be an extra ball as well as all those runs going on to the total again. Not there quick enough and not committing to the take. Well, apologies, it's been given as runs. 137 for six. This should be four. Just waited a fraction of a second, played it later than he would have. That's the reason he's found the gap. Good shot by Upul Chandana. To a fired up. Yes, quite a contrary. Everyone thought that this pitch would favor the spin, but the spinners are the ones who are giving the runs away. Just look at Chandana. Played the square cut well today. This should go all the way. Balaji not quick enough. Wonderful shot by Upul Chandana. It's a glorious shot by him. He had the width, but again, to get the placement right was so important. There was a man down deep on the third man fence. And uh, in fact, got it uh, wide off him. And again, playing it on the front foot, the square cut. 
which is a bit of a rarity. Another well judged single to Saurabh Ganguly. 50 to Mahela Jayawardhanim. His 22nd one day international 50. A very good innings under pressure. But it could be a great innings if the team wins. Yes, I think innings are really uh, evaluated on the basis of uh, its value to a team. And uh, Mahala Jawad has played so well so far. He really has to just carry on. 650 against India. Very good delivery, but inside edge, that should be four. So luck with the Sri Lankan team. It's an expensive over 10 runs coming off it. It's 160 for six. Another good shot. They're using the pace in the pitch. Gambuli after it. He won't get there. It's another four. Indians looking helpless at the moment. Runs are coming in boundaries. Yes, the acceleration certainly coming on for Sri Lankans. That again neatly played by Mahala Jawadana. He's so deft when he plays in that region. Wonder whether a first slip would be a good idea. The ball is not turning too much. A great shot that's four four fielders inside the ring on the offside and Mahela Jaiwar then it pierced that gap to perfection that's for bowling by Harbhajan Singh dropping it short giving Mahela Jaiwar then enough time to get behind it and punch it uh, just concentrating on the gap again Mahela Jaiwar then when he's on song certainly he's class act oh Good fielding by a man who is not playing this match because of uh, fever, viral infection. That's what we were told. Not playing today, Yuvraj Singh, because of viral infection. This is good cricket from Sri Lanka. Singh just slipping on that occasion again uh, probably the viral flu having some effect on him now this could be another edge that the wicket keeper failed to catch it there was a bit of a deflection and it was the first or the second ball of the over down the leg side. Let's have a look. Uh, seems like it came off the bat. Another chance. The pull Chandana is proving to be the perfect foil. Ten overs to go. It's 176 for six. run it down to third man that's four there was a first slip in position he got it to the right of the first slip and fine enough for the third man great shot he's brilliant when working the ball in that direction Mahala Jawadana just look at those uh, supple wrists just giving the ball direction turning the blade and uh, running it just wide of the man got it square a third man is going to come back this is where India has a weakness an extra run conceded in the deep 183 for six
gone up in the air, but in the gap. But he may have been in control of that shot, uh, knowing he was playing that in the gap. Two runs of the over so far. Delivery within the Sehwag. Much straighter ball played wide enough for a single. Paul Chandana has really played a good innings here 36 of 49. 186 for six. Paul Chandana will look for two. He's lightning quick. And in fact, he'll make it comfortably target getting easier and easier for the Sri Lankans. In the comedy box we've got the two Ians, Ian Ealing and Ian Bishop. It was 95 for 6 in the 26th over and the one would have thought, many would have thought Sri Lanka were dead and buried. 93 runs now this partnership between Chandana and Jayawardena. to long leg and 32 needed from 46 deliveries Ian Healy they're in the box seat but they're the nervous moments for a bowler that shot Chandana got well inside the line and played a full-blooded hook shot the bowler must have been very anxious Partnership comes up. What a knock this is by Jay Wardener. It's hard to relax as a bowler and off spinner when your field's up and the batsmen are on fire. Did it make it? The umpire's still asking the question. I think it has. Now yeah, we'll have a good look here. Definitely by a couple of feet as well. Pushing card for two. Jai Warner's coming back. And he gets home safely. Wonderful running. Good positive stuff. And problems. Problems at 200 comes up for Sri Lanka. Well, Dravid just shakes the head. His fielding team was talked about earlier by Sanjay Mandraka. Not as fast as the Sri Lankans, for example. And he's starting to find that out right now. Well, they've milked this leg side field so well. An abundance of fielders on the offside. There is so much room here. Only one fielder saving the single, and two fielders on the ropes saving the boundaries. And these two batsmen have milked that leg side field, picking up singles, picking up twos with deft touches. And that has contributed significantly to this partnership. Squeezed it through between keeper and slip, and uh, the runs are flowing. Raul Dravid can barely look. You know why? Because just that delivery, he moved his slip wider. He moved the man at slip just to about a fourth slip. Patan was always going to angle it across the right hander in the hope of a catch. Oh no, that's exactly where I just was. Early in the innings, it was 47 dot balls and just six singles compared to what it is now. Look at that 47 and six singles it started out as. 
and they, all, they had four fours then. Now they've got the singles to three times as many as the fours, which is perfect. Perfect. Their intensity and their rotation has been excellent. Shots like that and finding the gaps. And all the way through this series, all the way through the middle to lower order in the main have been the ones who have restored innings. The older the ball has gotten has made batting a lot easier. Raul Dravid would have thought at one point, yeah, we've got this. But it's been a superb display of batting that has taken it away from him. 11 needed of 25 deliveries. Wide. Guilty as charged, say that. It was the cool head of Dravid one night here in Dambulla, the cool head of Jasuria another night, so the experienced batsmen have been able to get their teams over the line. This time it's an experienced partnership in the absence of Jasuria. 212 for six. It's foolish of length, and he's slipped away for two. That angle around the wicket, in fact, there might be three, and there is, just opens up the onside a touch. Now, this could be tight. Missed the stumps, needed a direct hit, and that could have been too tight for Jaya Wardena. Harbhajan was he on his heels? I think he just got caught in his heels and they picked up this single. He recovered well and everything else was fine. Hiked away to square leg. So two required to win. And the wides column, for me, nine wides tonight are all little areas. Harbhajan saying 9 for 49, he should have pulled better on, uh, on this surface. Over the top, and straight to third man, will they come back for two? They're coming back, and uh, this should be it, that's it, he punches the air. His teammates are standing in the pavilion, it's been a wonderful partnership. 126 runs unbeaten between Jaya Wardena and Upal Chandana. His part in this opera cannot be understated. Chandan has played well. He's one of the most understated cricketers in the world, Upal Chandana. He's the man responsible for mine for getting the score ticking over. Allowing Joe Wardner to relax, become more confident that his partner was going to stay with him. And then they both blossomed into two magnificent innings. Royal Driver just looks and says, get me out of Danbula, get me to Colombo. Let's get some good practice under our belts and bounce back on the weekend and for the next time we meet this fella.